Okay, so I got a new toy. Um, got a couple of new toys, but one of them I'm going to show you now. I got a flow bench. Now, this is an old flow bench, and the guy who made it, they're, just, they're not in business anymore. I think he died or something like that. I'm not, I'm not positive, but it is a JKM, and it's either a 400 or 600 CFM. I don't know which. I don't have a book for it, but um, we're going to make it work. Now, it's in pretty good shape. It's all there. Uh, some of the hoses and stuff are rotten. They use surgical hose. Um, but yeah, we're going to open up the back of this thing and uh, see what kind of shape it's got. A belt driven motor. A big Dayton fan in there. It's got some 3 inch PVC. Uh, it's got an extra um, Bore adapter on there. I think this is a four inch and that's probably a 4125 or something. Looks so like a calibration plate. That's a super flow calibration plate, but um, and some bolts and stuff. So we are going to see if we can make this thing work. Let's get the back of it off and look at it. All right. Well, the good news is all the hoses are hooked up so we can tell where they go. The bad news is. Most of the hoses are rotten and broken, but that's okay. That's that's easy enough to fix. As long as you know where they're going, uh, replacing them is pretty easy. So you've got your valve here, which controls your flow, I'm guessing. And uh, that's this knob here. So this knob here controls your closing and opening of this valve. And then you've got your vacuum switches or your, your air switches that control which way these are flowing. Uh, one direction is for intake, the other direction is for exhaust. You've got a battery operated temperature probe that goes down, measures your incoming air or going air going through the head or whatever. Um, and then you've got your pitot tubes right here and right here which measures your basically differential and your, I think they measure your stagnation and your velocity or Maybe they calculate velocity. It's been a long time. Math is not a, physics is not my strong suit. But anyway, um, yeah, so you've got your incline manometer here. This one came with it. Um, and then it, this one came with it. So I'm not sure, not sure what all I need to do here, but we're gonna figure it out. So first thing we're gonna do is break my leg. Jesus, that hurt. Um, First thing I'm going to do is move that control arm so I don't do that again. And then we're going to replace all the cracked and dry tubing and see if we can power this thing up. Alright, so this tubing being used here is like a surgical tubing. And it is very, very brittle. So um, we're going to take it loose and I'm replacing it with some good old vinyl tubing. All right, so it's the next night. Um, I got all my vinyl tubing replaced. Uh, this manometer is hooked up. This one over here is not. All new stuff here. All new tubing in the back. Well, some of it's not new, but all the old surgical style tubing has been replaced. Um, I also put a new power cord on it because the old one was like a range connector. So, um, and my cord that I used for my welder already had a different style on there, so we put that style plug on the end. So 250 volt, 50 amp plug. Um, got a 4 and 4030 adapter on here. It's already bolted down. So I'm going to spray this thing, clean it up a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to bolt the head down first or if I'm going to just turn it on and see if it works. So let's get this cleaned off real quick and then we might turn it on and see if it works before I bolt the head down. All right, according to the instructions, it says to have my flow control knob and my balancing knob or whatever that is, can't remember what it's called, metering knob. Both of those all the way clockwise, the switch is off. I've got it in intake, I've got it in intake mode, so it's gonna suck air through instead of pushing it out for exhaust. Now we're gonna hook up the power. Now, um, I don't know what's going to happen when I plug this in. This thing's been sitting for a few years, not lot long, and it was working when it was taken out of service, but... Okay, nothing happened. That's good, right? Let's see if the light works. 
All right, we're halfway there. Um, now, I'm going to turn it on. Hopefully this thing's going to come on. It's probably going to be really loud. Um, so we're not sure how loud it's going to be. So if you're wearing headphones, you're warned. All right, well the belt has been sitting so long, the belt's got a hard spot in it. It's either gonna break or that's gonna soften up real quick, so I'm gonna turn it back on. So that is really, really loud. So now we know it works. I can set a head up on here and see if I can get some kind of reading. And the way this one works, this this is a pito style or pito style uh, flow bench. It does not have an orifice in it, so it does not automatically calculate CFM. So what I need to do is I need to take, I need to get this to where it's flowing 28 inches up here. And then I'll have to look at my incline and look at my pressure differential there, and then I can calculate my flow. All right, I got a Brodix head mounted up here. These are the heads that were on Frankenova, and I don't have a checking spring. Now, a checking valve spring is a very low tension spring you can put under here, and then you move this around. You can set that on there. You can push it down, and you'll know how much you push it down, and the spring keeps tension on it so it doesn't fall down any farther. Well. I don't have a checking spring. So what, I'm, what I did was I put my valve spring height micrometer in here. And I know about what these heads should flow around 500 lift, uh, which is half an inch. So I'm gonna adjust this on there, put it on the top, kind of zero it out, run it down half an inch. And then I'm gonna attempt to flow it, take down my measurements on all the um, manometers. And then I'm gonna try to get a calculation that gets me anywhere close. I think this head should flow around 230 CFM or at, at uh, 28 inches of water. So what I'm gonna try to do is try to see if my calculations, if my formula that I found online is correct, because even though I have the instructions for this machine, it doesn't give me the instructions that I found, does not give me the formula to calculate CFM. It tells me how to operate the machine and what results to get, but it doesn't tell me the calculations. So I'm gonna get this on here, get the valve open half an inch. We're gonna turn it on. I'm gonna zero everything out like it says and then we're going to see if we can calculate it to come where anywhere near what it's supposed to flow. All right, I've got it at zero. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to loosen up my height micrometer where I'm going down about 500 thousandths. And then I'm going to tighten this down and make sure that I go around five times because each one is 500 or is 50 thousandths. So that should put me about right. And you know what? I might not have 500 thousandths of adjustment in this stupid micrometer. So see how far down it'll let me go. So all the way up is zero, and then we're going to push down. That's 100, 200, oh, so 200 and uh, 70 thousandths, because we're going backwards. So 270, so that's not good. we got to figure something else out. All right, so what I was able to do was I went and got a vacuum secondary spring off one of my carburetor kits and I put that in there. 
So that works pretty good. So now we're going to try this again and get this up a pretty good bit. All right. Now I really need to get this where it's straight up and down with the valve, not. at a competing angle, if competing angles are even a, such a thing. All right, so we're all the way up there, and we're touching. All right, now we've got it at zero, and I'm going to turn this down until we're down 500 thousandths. That's one, two, three, four, five. Now we're going to turn this thing on, follow the instructions, and see what it flows. Now, one thing that you would normally have is you would have a radius entry on here, and I don't, but I'm just trying to get kind of close, and I'm not sure how much that changes it. This is all new to me. So I'm sure somebody out there is way smarter is going to correct me. Hopefully they will. If not, I'll, you know, I'm going to order the stuff I need to get all this stuff done correctly and repeatably. But right now we're just playing. Okay, that thing is ridiculously loud, and it's after it's it's late tonight, and I can't run this again tonight. It is stupid loud. So I'm going to take the info that I have. Now I was at 28 inches of water over here, and I was over here somewhere. I took a picture of it so I could, because uh, I, you know, jumped the gun and did not write anything down. So it didn't bring pencil. Pencils. I mean, this over there I could get, but I took a picture of it to make it easy. So. Um, I'm going to do some calculating. I've got temperature and humidity and barometric pressure readings and see if I can calculate what this thing is supposed to flow. What it did flow. We've got some answers. Now, I cranked it up and when I was at 28 inches of water over here, I have my load. Uh, you, you use your pressure control valve here to get this to 28 inches of water. Um, I opened up this valve, 500 thousandths according to my micrometer here. I had this open where it was supposed to be, which is your um, micrometer valve. And then we started getting flow here when I started opening up the intake valve. We started getting flow here. And going by velocity here, my velocity was at 4,700 feet per minute. Now to calculate CFM if I'm doing this correctly and my number came out pretty close because I think this thing should flow around 225 to 240 depending on if you believe Brodix's website or other people that have flowed this head. So velocity is or CFM is velocity times pi times the radius in feet squared. So our radius of three inch pipe that we're flowing on this thing on um, now we've got a 4.03 bore on our plate, but the pipe where the pitot tubes are is 3 inches. So half of that is 1.5 inches, which is 0.125 feet. So we're going to times that times itself. That comes up with 0 0.015. Um, and we're going to go times... I equals 0 0.049 and I'm going to go times 4700 feet per minute that's 230 CFM that's pretty dang close now dynos flow benches all that stuff repeatability is what you want because um, 
if I flow this head tomorrow at a different temperature and it reads different, well then if I poured it and I flow it again and it's better, was it the temperature change, was it the bench, was it the inaccuracy of all the little adjustments? Because let's face it, this can only be so accurate and my micrometer here and all this stuff the way I'm doing, because this valve, the way I've got this set up, I need a checking valve because this valve is so weak. I'm thinking it's possible that the airflow, because man, this thing is loud. And I think the airflow could probably pull the valve open a little bit. So we might be a tad over 500 lift, but we might not, we might be dead on it. Um, it didn't feel, it didn't look like it moved, but I don't know. So pretty happy with it so far. It, we, we, we got it working, fixed some, some old dried out lines on it. Uh, came on and ran, I was able to make a calculation that came up really close to what this head should flow. Um, now, I don't know how much not having a uh, radius entry on the head will affect that. I don't know if that's supposed to help it or hurt flow, make it more accurate. Um, I'm not sure how that works. So I got a lot to learn. I'm gonna be doing a lot of reading and we're gonna be playing with this thing more in the future. See you guys next video.